Good evening all, and welcome. Closets are certainly useful, but are they hiding spots for people with nefarious intentions, or perhaps beings from the other side? Make your own mind up in tonight's video. A for now, get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I don't really believe in the paranormal. I think there was probably an explanation, but I was too young to know what it was. I'm going to tell the story as I remember it. My room wasn't very large, a typical square room, mostly taken up by a dresser, bookshelf slash TV stand combo, and my twin sized bed. The bed bisected the room, separating the entrance door from the sliding closet door. As I was young, I'd like to have the fan on. I had one of those long extendo chains for the light, so I could turn off my light and still enjoy the fan at nights. I was in my room messing around not long before bed. I've always been an active person, and in my childhood, I was never anywhere in the house without a trusty toy sword or toy sword stand in at close hand. And tonight was no exception. I don't remember why I swung, because again, small room. But I swung my sword and it struck the long chain for the light. Anywho, whoever has accidentally whacked their chain knows what happened next. The chain goes flying into the air, wraps itself endlessly around the light fixture, and turns off the light. In an instant, I was plunged into darkness. Annoyed, I clambered onto my bed and began to tentatively reach up. I didn't want to stick my hand in the fan blade, but I needed to reach really close in order to begin untangling the chain. I froze when I heard a shuffling sound and then a groan. It sounded close by in my room with me. It sounded like the closet door was sliding open on its old track. I kept trying to reach up, but now the hair on my arm was standing on end. The groan of the door finally stopped, but what replaced it was a heavy, throaty breathing. I imagined it, of course. I had to have, because what little boy doesn't have an overactive imagination? But all the same, I was terrified. I gave up trying to untangle the light chain and instead reached for the top of it, where the chain fed directly into the light fixture. The breathing was closer now, and my brain was happy to provide the loudest sounds and the horrifying images of everything they belonged to creeping towards my bed. I found the chain and I pulled. I know I pulled. I heard the click, but perhaps I just wanted to because the light did not flood the room and banish away the darkness of my fears. I pulled again and again. Surely the chain was just too tightly wound to activate the light. Of course it was. I couldn't wait to find out. I dove off my bed and lunged for the door to my bedroom, flung it open and allowed the light from the hallway to spill into the room. I whirled around, toy sword still in hand, but there was nothing there. The gloom of my bedroom stared back at me. Bed, dresser, bookcase, with my TV and Xbox perched atop, and no monsters. I re-entered my room and climbed onto the bed once more reached up, and with the aid of the whole light, pulled firmly on the base of the light string. With a loud click, the light turned on, and my bedroom returned to normal. I unwound the light chain from the light fixture, and climbed off the bed, sunspots dancing in my eyes from looking at the light, and feeling a little woozy from the past minute. But it was okay. It was all in my imagination. There was no monster. The light wasn't turning on because I was pulling it wrong. I could explain everything very easily. Except for why my closet door was open. To fully appreciate the background of this story, I need to give you information regarding where I lived. 
You see, we were in a temporary living situation. Our house had burnt to the ground and we'd lost everything. But fortunately, my parents had insurance and they put us up in a temporary living situation. I had my own room as the only child and my parents had a different room. I was about 15 at the time and that place always gave me the creeps for real. I don't think a day would go by where I found myself in that area where I wouldn't be terrified. The place itself wasn't too bad, but the situation and location weren't the best. But still, we knew it wouldn't last forever. So we didn't get too comfortable. Except for maybe in one aspect. You see, the clerk or admin guy who worked behind the counter of this motel was quite nice. And whenever I'd get back from school, he'd always be on shift and try to strike up a conversation with me. Now, because we're living in a motel, he obviously has the key and can go into our room, which I personally find a bit creepy. So I started putting the do not disturb signs up, but my parents kept telling me to take it off because otherwise our room wouldn't be cleaned, which to be fair, was necessary. A few weeks pass and I'm still not feeling good. There's just something about this place that gives me the creeps. Every morning, I also get some free complimentary breakfast before I have to go to school. I remember this was a Wednesday. I tended to rush my homework in the morning, grab a few bits to eat and plow through everything I possibly could and think of excuses if I don't have enough time to finish. Now, the way this is set out is that the banqueting hall is right after the front desk. And from where I was sitting, I had a clear view of where the creeper guy was. So he gets a guest, they come and talk to him. And shortly after they leave, he leaves as well. I just assume it was something related to that family and that his business was needed elsewhere. But I was wrong. I never saw him return. And when I went back up to my room, in order to just finish grabbing the rest of my books, did I get a very uncomfortable feeling? I stayed quiet for a minute and could have sworn I heard breathing coming from the closet. It was the first time in my life that I felt true fear and panic was engulfing me. I stood there stunned, unsure of what my next move should be. I looked at my wristwatch and noticed that time was running out and that if I didn't leave soon, I wouldn't be able to make it to school on time and catch my bus. So full of trepidation, did I creep forward to the closet and swing open the door only to be met with the strange guy. I jumped, let out an audible scream and he let out a scream as well. I was furious. I wasn't sure what he was doing in the room, but I was very, very upset. I scream for my parents who come in from the other room and yell at the guy who is still in the closet as he hasn't come out yet. My dad starts yelling at him, asking what the hell he's doing spying on a 14 year old girl to which he has no reply. After about 10 minutes of an onslaught of words from my father, does he get up from his crouched position, apologize and walk back to the front desk, this time with a cue lagging behind. My dad tells me to go to school. So I do. And when I get back, the guy is gone. He never came back to work and my dad refused to tell me what went down that day. But I have a good idea that my dad gave him more than a piece of his mind. So creepy peeping Tom, who was in my closet? Let's not meet again. And I really hope you didn't see more than I wanted you to. Weirdo. I finally feel comfortable sharing this story. 
since I have now moved out of the house in question. A little bit of context is necessary. My stepmom and I at the time didn't get along. My dad also divorced her and had a different woman move in with us at the time that we lived there. I got along great with her. And this plays a part in the story. So it was the summer before eighth grade. And the three of us, dad, first step mum and I had moved into this three bedroom house that was pretty nice. My best friend and I were really excited because my room was bigger and we had more things to do. The house was set up to where you could walk in the door and a closet was in front of you for coats and boots. To your right was the living room and just beyond that was the dining room and kitchen. After you would walk into the living room and would be going into the dining room and there was a hallway on your left with the bathroom on the right and my parents room on the left. The hallway then made a right and turns into the office that was on the left with my bedroom at the end of the hall. I know it's a bit confusing, but do understand it is important to understand the story. The corner of the hallway, right where my parents door is, is very dark, abnormally dark and eerie in fact. But I would have to walk past it if I wanted to get to my room or go to the kitchen. Within the first week of living there, I would hear scratching in the walls between my room and the office. And any time I was in the living room, I would hear a thud from something falling. Having two cats, this didn't nerve me too much since they moved to get onto things and play. I would often ignore any sounds and move on. Well, one night I came home from a school dance with a star balloon and gave it to my stepmom for no reason. She had told me to just put it in her room and I did. I put it in her closet. Both parents had separate closets and the both of us forgot about it. Weeks later, she gets home from work before I get home from school. When I arrive, she confronts me about if I left the balloon in the hallway. Me being confused and having no memory about any balloon, walk into the hallway and there is the silver balloon, fully inflated and dead center in the hallway. I rack my memory and tell her that it was from the school dance and that it probably floated out of the room from a draft. We both knew this was very unlikely since it would have have to have gone through two closed doors and our AC, which was too crappy to push a balloon like that around. We both agree that's what it was and forget about it. Cut to a few months later and my stepmom comes up to me and explains what had just happened. She was in her room and doing her makeup. Out of the corner of her eye, where her closet was, she thought she saw me. She told me she wasn't in the mood for me messing around, but when she turned to where I was, no one was there. She then just laughs and said that it was weird. Things remained calm until after she moved out and my new stepmom moved in. Things started back up and the noises return. Again, I thought nothing of it because now we have two dogs plus two cats in the house which is double the odd noises. My mom and I are talking about ghosts and whatnot, and she was telling me about how she can see them. After telling me about stories of previous haunted houses, she drops the bomb about a little girl in her closet, how she will sometimes move from my parents' room to the office, and sometimes would just be outside the hallway. My mom had advised me to never seek out a spirit, because they just want to be validated that they are real. That if you do, they won't leave you alone. My mum told me the girl was afraid of women, but loved my father. And that the girl would just stare at me from my mum's corner. I, being a horror movie nerd, but skeptic, decided to heed her warning and not do anything and just ignore anything strange. A few months into my mum moving in, 
she comes into my room late at night. She's shaking and says that there's something wrong with my dad and that she thinks only I can help. I walk in and my dad is just staring at the closet while breathing heavily and crying. My dad is very tall and a rough man who never cries or shows his fear. So seeing this was instantly alarming. I rush to his side, start calling his name and he doesn't respond and just stares at the closet. I try asking my mum what happened and she just said that he was trying to sleep, but woke up and started doing this. We started to try and get him up to get out of the room. Once he sat on the couch in the living room, he started coming too, asking why he was there and what happened. He insisted he go back to bed despite our protesting. The cycle of him going to bed, then starting to gasp and crying and coming into the living room continued until we brought him to the porch outside where he said he felt clearly that it was like someone was hugging him someone child size. He said he felt the little girl's sadness and that she was calling to him. He again went back into the room and started the cycle. But when he came to in the living room, he started getting violent, demanding to go into the room and that she needed him, that she was crying for him. My mother blocked the door into the hallway with a Bible and cross in hand and said that he wouldn't pass. My father then said that he knew how to get into the room and that he would sooner or later. This terrified us because my father wasn't like this and it was very much out of his personality. Anytime my mother would come near him with the Bible and a cross, he would tell her to get away, that he didn't want her near him, that he needed to go into the room because that was his room. Eventually he made a deal with us that if he could just talk to the girl, that he would do what we wanted. That's all he needed, to talk to the girl. We begrudgingly let him, and we told him to stay in the living room. After five minutes, he came back out, totally fine. We asked what happened, and they talked about it. He told us then what had happened before. He said that he was the little girl's mother when he was in the living room but was the girl's father when in the bedroom. He said that the mother was just angry and hateful. This just scared my mum and I. We just wanted this all to be over because it was 3am at this point and we were exhausted. When my parents went into their room, nothing else happened. I finally fell asleep after much tossing and turning. And in the morning, my father didn't have much memory of anything, mainly just being on the couch and on the porch. I used to have many videos about this, but they got erased. My parents don't really speak about it now. One more big thing that happened after that night, but it was directed towards me. So for context, my father and I used to make it a tradition to go down to a resale shop at our last house and buy these porcelain dolls. They were very beautiful and we'd never had any problems with them before. Neither of my stepmoms were fans of the dolls because they thought they were creepy. So because I didn't have any space in the living room, I had to place them in my closet. They all stood up and were very stable, having a stand wired to their backs. So these dolls weren't moving and had stayed in that position for months. So I was in my room settling down for the night a few minutes after I had turned off my lights and was relaxing, I heard a loud thud from my closet. My mind is racing because I didn't know what could possibly make the noise. My brain tried to reason that perhaps one of the cats was in the closet and that they wanted out or that maybe something just broke. I then worked up the nerve to get out of bed or to find out what it was. I could hear my heart in my eyes racing and booming. It felt like 10 minutes just standing outside my closet, trying to build up my nerve to open the door. Finally, I turned the knob and opened it, my eyes scanning the darkness. 
I decided to walk in to find the drawstring when I came face to face with my doll, strung up by her hair on a hanger. My scream was caught in my throat as my heart stopped. How the hell did she get like that? My dolls haven't moved in months and have never felt down that way before. It's impossible for her to have anywhere to fall from when she was originally placed and landed onto a hanger shelf. All of my dolls were crammed together, but none of them were shifted as much as an inch. The only way she could have fallen without disturbing the other dolls was to fall forwards, but she fell at an angle of 60 degrees. There's no way. I called my dad, and he just laughed at me and called me a weenie. But he did put my dolls into the attic and went to bed. Only minor things happened after that, like seeing someone walk across the doorway into the bathroom, but no one was there. The dogs going nuts for no reason, doors opening or random sounds. We've since moved, but I still get the chills when thinking about stepping into that house. I know this sounds far fetched, but it feels good to share. I felt bad for the next people who have to move into that house, because that little girl is their problem now. They'll figure that out soon enough. Moving into a new house can be a daunting experience for most. Me and my sister were very anxious about our new place. My dad had just been made redundant from his job, and we couldn't afford to rent the place we were living in any longer. A friend of our dad's had a place in the forest. It was an old house, very big, but because it was out in the boonies and needed a bit of maintenance, my dad's friend was willing to give it to us very cheap on the condition that we tried to fix it up. He was a wealthy man, so for him, I think so long as the house was maintained a little bit, it was unimportant. Nonetheless, we were a bit skeptical. We were city girls all our life, and to move to the remote countryside was a culture shock that we hadn't anticipated. However, making the most out of the situation, we tried to adapt to our new environment. One thing that we found particularly creepy were our bedrooms. Damn dark, and uninviting. No matter how much I tried to paint the walls, add brighter light bulbs into the light fixtures, did the eerie feeling not go away, and I never really felt at home there. Anyway, that was the background. On to the story. My room was your average size room. It was square in shape. I painted the walls pink and white, and it had a closet. Now, the closet was nothing special, but I always had a strange feeling from there. Please bear in mind that this was in one of the corners of the house. My room was just always my room, and I never really felt comfortable. I always felt like I was being watched when I'd sleep. I'd sometimes wake up in a sweat, or have very bad dreams repeatedly. There'd be times where I'd go sleep over at friends' houses, and this would never happen. But the moment I was asleep in my bedroom in particular, did the bad dreams and strange feelings surge. This was also true if I slept in a different room of the house, for example, crashing on the sofa. I was completely fine. I ended up using the sofa far more than I did my own room, but my parents weren't too happy about it, so I tried using the sofa less and less, as much as it jeopardized my sleep. I had just bought a whole load of things from the mall. A lot of it, things I didn't really need, and upon realizing this and being far too lazy to return them, 
did I just add them to a box I had in the corner of the room and tell myself that it was time I put it in the cupboard or closet. So I picked up the heavy box and started pushing it towards the end of the closet. It was only then that I heard a creak and a snap. Several of the planks that had been covering up whatever was underneath had given way. My first instinct was fear. Because this house, as I mentioned before, was rented to us by a family friend. And if we were damaging the property, which was the opposite of what we were supposed to be doing, my parents and therefore me could get into trouble. So I removed the box at once and assessed the damage. It didn't look so bad, but using the flashlight from my iPhone, was I able to identify something beneath my room. I looked and there were some stone stairs going down that had been covered by the space that the closet occupied. I didn't know what to do with this information. Should I tell my dad or should I explore? Now I was scared of the room at night mostly, but during the day, that feeling wasn't there. Then I wondered if it had anything to do with what lie underneath my closet. So bravely, I started pulling apart the loose and weak planks from their original position. I only needed to take off two or three more until there was more than enough room for me to go down. So I did. I went all the way down and it was a lot longer than I had anticipated. It felt like at least a story and a half. When I got to the bottom, it was pitch black and there were no light switches here. I fumbled for my phone and dropped it in the dark. The flashlight was on and it revealed a dark little dingy room. I kept looking around, seeing if there was anything of interest, but there didn't seem to be anything. Just as I was going back up the stairs, did I feel a cold chill run up my spine and instinctively I started turning around to see if I could see anything whilst keeping my hand with my phone outstretched to not only see if anything was here, but to maybe get the chance to record it. The feeling didn't go away. And when I heard a strange noise coming from this empty place, did I bolt it out of there and ran all the way back to my room? I was in tears. I don't think I'd ever felt so much fear in my entire life. And I just wanted to go back to our old home. I told my sister about it. And the next day we went down with tape, a few lights and a few other bits and bobs in order to see properly down there. It was a very uninteresting room to be fair with nothing in it, just a strange and odd presence. After that, I started sleeping better. I wonder if it had anything to do with discovering that secret room. I don't know what its purpose was or why it was there to begin with, but it makes for a good story and certainly a handful of creepy situations. And after the room feeling empty and calmer for a few years, did I think that whatever was here before had gone away until it returned with a vengeance. There were times when the fear would be so indescribably big that I'd have to leave the house itself and visit friends. It was terrifying. Everything came to a close when one night I was just hanging up my school uniform for the next day in the closet. And all of the sudden, a gust of wind pushes me and slams the closet door shut. The originator of the gust of wind was the closet itself, as all my doors, including my inside hallway door, were closed. So there's no way that amount of wind came from anywhere inside, because it simply didn't. And I think, but I'm not sure, 
that I heard my name being whispered through the wind as it passed through, but I don't know a hundred percent. After telling my mum and dad about this, did they start getting concerned? They too had had strange stuff happen to them in their closet, but I was too scared to ask, as mine had been acting up far too much. My parents spoke and decided that they would try and get a smaller place in the city and that country life really wasn't for them. As it was my dad's friend, we moved out pretty quickly and were actually back in the same building, but a different apartment, which was familiar, but nicer. Here's the kicker though. A few years later, we're having a barbecue in a different house now. My dad had got promoted since then and we can afford somewhere bigger. He's talking to his friend and asks what happened to the house we lived in. He says that the next people who rented it kept complaining about seeing something in the closet, a shadow moving very fast, which they couldn't see properly, and that their daughter started complaining about the little girl coming out of the closet at night and trying to speak to her. She said there was something strange about her face, but I never got that detail. All I know is that there's something weird going on in that house, specifically the closet, and I'm not sure what it is. Could it be a young girl's restless spirit caught within the confines of the room underneath the closet? Who knows? I'm just glad I never saw her and hope the restless soul can find peace. My dad passed away when I was 16, from complications due to a motorcycle accident three years prior. We had moved out of the house he passed in and into a new one rather quickly. The first thing we set up was his little memorial spot. He was cremated and kept with us because his last words were, I want to be with my family. This little shrine, as we like to call it, was at the top of the stairs outside my bedroom. One night, I had both my closet and bedroom door open and started seeing something black dart in and out of view in my closet, like it was peeking its head out at me. I got a bad feeling about it, but tried to ignore it, but it persisted. I called my boyfriend at the time and tried to distract myself with conversation, but it kept on going. My boyfriend was never a believer in ghosts, so when I told him about what was happening, it was no surprise that he dismissed it. I was sure I could prove him wrong, so I started taking pictures of my iPad and scouring them over trying to find a black mass in the closet. I didn't find anything of note, so I gave up and put the iPad down. At some point in my phone conversation, I lay the iPad while it was still on picture mode, causing it to zoom into the corner of the room above the bedroom door. Without even trying to see anything, I could clearly see my dad's head shape and broad shoulders. It looked like he was wearing sunglasses too. I like to think he was checking in on me, or maybe keeping whatever it was in the closet close at bay. Everyone I showed the picture to could see him too. I eventually put a picture of him in sunglasses next to the iPad pic, and put a giant red circle around Ghostad. Now, I only have that version of the picture instead of the original. But anyway, I can't remember what generation my iPad was. This was 2011. Beyond the doorway in the stand, my dad's urn sat along with pictures and candles. Maybe that's why he showed up. I'm not sure. Many years ago, when I was a little un, my mum was on the computer doing whatever adults do on those magic boxes that house 3D pinball and free cell. I, being the greedy little gorb I was, decided I wanted a crunchy from the kitchen. And so I walked downstairs, and as I walked into the dining room, I heard a man's voice say, Hey, Jay, it's okay. 
I thought maybe it was just my mum calling me from upstairs, and so I got my crunchy, ran upstairs and asked, What is it, mummy? To which she said, I didn't call you. For a while after, I used to swear I could see the figure of a man standing in my bedroom at night, and would tell my mum about the man in my room who came out of the wardrobe. She always just brushed it off, and went with saying, Night night, to the man in the wardrobe before I slept. Well, for years there was nothing, and as I grew older it just developed into me realising how much of a silly kid I was, making this nonsense up. Until about two years ago, I woke up earlier than normal. I was daydreaming someone had been calling my name. After waking up and realising no one was in my room or even calling my name, I was ready to brush it off and go back to sleep, until a man's voice said, Jay, I miss you. Now call me insane. But this freaked me out, and I felt like telling people would just make me look like a waste of oxygen. But about a year ago, I stumbled upon a bunch of old cassettes, which she had recorded over the years, and played one in the radio to see what it was. Eventually a tape came up, and there was the voice. It was engraved in my brain. I couldn't forget it. My granny told me, that was my dad talking. My dad died nearly 20 years ago, and I never got to know him and have no memories of him as I was far too young. He loved me and never had me out of his arms. With myself being quite a sceptical person, it was hard to grasp this, as it is against a lot of things I believe to be the case. However, from what it seems, my dad has always been there never seen, but definitely heard. I was 16 and living with my dad. I was getting ready to go to sleep, and suddenly it was like someone sat on the foot of my bed. I felt the weight settle down and the mattress slash box spring creak a little. I was laying on my side facing away at the time, so I sort of half sat up, and half turned towards the foot of the bed. I could just barely make out the outline of a hunched over shadow figure sitting there. The moonlight coming through the blinds gave it a weird shimmery effect, almost like the predator, but with shadows if that makes sense. I just kind of froze and all the hairs on my body stood on end. Not wanting to disturb whatever it was, I slowly laid back down while trying to keep my eyes on it. It was facing away from me, and it didn't seem to be aware of me, or perhaps just didn't care. After a little while of staring at it, I slowly pulled my covers up over my face and started to silently cry a little bit, because it was just too much. I was more terrified than I had ever been in my life, and my adrenaline was racing. I don't know how long it was, but eventually I felt the weight ease off the bed. I sat there listening to any signs of what was happening, too afraid to peek out of the covers. I'd seen horror movies, and it sounded like a really bad idea at the time. A moment later, a bunch of hangers in my closet jingled, and I ripped off the covers to look, but whatever it was had gone. On the floor of my closet lay some clothes that had previously been hung up. When I slept in my old room, I would often feel breathing in my face, as if someone was kneeling next to my bed and breathing right at me. It never bothered me, because it felt like someone was watching over me. When I was home alone, I could sometimes hear the door handle of my father's room go up. It makes a very distinct sound that can't be replicated, because it's an old and creaky door handle. I've switched rooms over the years, and now sometimes I hear the sound of cloth scraping over the floor, as if someone were walking round with a heavy robe or something. But I could never pinpoint the exact location of the sound's origin. One time I was trying to sleep, when I suddenly heard a noise from my closet. I carefully open it, and see my empty coat hangers flop around a bit, as if someone had just gone through them. Nothing bad ever happened. But sometimes I got the feeling that I wasn't alone in that house. 
The floor in the hallway was always creaking, as if someone had just stepped on it. And there'd be times where I'd faintly hear someone walking up the stairs. It was certainly unnerving. Me and my sister used to share a room. I was around 10 and had to sleep by the closet. And I was always scared of it because our closet door broke off and it was just pitch black in there. I woke up in a cold sweat and started feeling like something was watching me. So I was facing my sister and I flipped over to face the closet. I look over and my mum's silhouette is standing there looking at her phone with her hand on her hip. I get confused and I say, Mum? And then this thing snaps its head over to me. And I kid you not, it had the most demonic looking glowing red eyes. I got so terrified, I just whipped my blanket over my head and didn't move, and eventually fell back asleep. But it was terrifying. It definitely wasn't something from this earth. And I even asked my mum if she was in the room that night. And she said no. I'm not sure if it was my imagination or not, but it was certainly freaky. Years ago, when I was hanging out at a friend's house in the living room playing games or something, I noticed a man kept coming out of a room and staring at us. When I looked at him, he would go back into the room. I figured it was his uncle, but after about an hour of back and forth between him watching us, me looking at him and him going back into the room, I got pretty annoyed. And I ended up asking my friend what his uncle was doing. And he let us know that he's been in a run and isn't home yet. Hearing that I asked him who the man was who had been watching us the entire time from that room in the hallway. He said there was no room and no other men that live in the house besides him. I pointed to the room and he said it was a closet. I checked to make sure. And after that, everyone was freaked out. His family ended up getting monks to cleanse the home because of it. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. If you did enjoy tonight's episode, don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment with your thoughts. That always helps and goes a long way. I really do enjoy doing closet stories, as there are some freaky things in there, aside from everything you never use. If there's a story that you wish to share, feel free to send it to my email or my Reddit page. All the information can be found in the description. But anyway, for now guys, it's time for me to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.